I've got a statement here I'll need to read. The meeting of the Rutherford County Public Works Subcommittee is being con conducted electronically. To Bill Lee's Executive Order 16, I would ask for a motion that conducting the meeting electronically is necessary to protect public health, safety, and welfare in light of the COVID virus. So moved. We have a motion. We need a second. Second. Please call the roll. Commissioner P. Yes. Commissioner Dodd. Yes. Commissioner Harris. Yes. Vice Chair Piercy. Yes. Mr. Sherino. Yes. Mr. Blair? Yes. Mr. Cush? In our previous meeting, we had decided to look at three separate companies, and we just took them in the order that they're on your maze paper. I'm going to call on Mr. Blair. He had a comment he wanted to make before we started this meeting. Mr. Blair? Chair, um, after doing some some soul searching and thinking about this process, uh, I really don't see a need to interview any of these 12 uh, respondents to the RFI. I, I think reviewing them is, is, is appropriate. And, and again, I think the reason we were doing it in the first place is to hopefully learn something that, that we didn't know before. Of course, I would uh, go to Becky and, and Mac and ask their opinion, but I, I think the interview process would be better served through the RFP. And, and again, uh, and make no mistake, I still would like to go through each of these. We've already gone through three and hopefully we'll get through these other three and continue to do that. But I see no reason to actually interview them until we get to the RFP and I think everyone should be allowed to participate in the RFP. Matter of fact, I would think it's, we're legally obligated to allow everyone to, to, to uh, participate. So that's just my thoughts, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we'll, we'll take that thought to the floor. Ms. Caldwell, what would be your opinion on that? The entire um, purpose of the RFI was to gather information so that we would know what we wanted to ask for in the RFP. So if y'all are comfortable with where you are as far as what you want and what you think is best for the community, then I think when we write the RFP, we use that information to do so. Um, so so I'm, I'm, you know, I don't have a, necessarily have an opinion on the interview piece other than to say, if you know what you prefer to see in the RFP and we can go ahead and draft that or craft that from what you know based on what we have here, I mean, that's, you know, that's no problem. Okay, thank you. Now I'll turn to Mr. Nolan for his comments. I agree. The other thing that I've done, and I don't know if any of y'all have, is uh, the three that we're talking about today, two of them I didn't know anything about, so I called and asked them some questions so I can help answer some questions possibly that y'all may have. Uh, but as far as getting someone to come in and do uh, a little conversation now and in two months from now come back with an expanded conversation, let's just wait and do the one conversation. The, one, the important one. Okay, thank you. Mayor, do you have a comment on this? <clears throat> I do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I agree with that. Uh, I, I feel like that some are located out of state. Some of these companies are located out of state. And because of COVID and restrictions on travel, may find it difficult to come <coughs> in now. Um, and I think even those who would come in, uh, and we started asking questions, they would probably not want to tell us everything about things that we're asking questions of because it's probably going to be in their RFP process that, that they would hold close. So we're not really doing anything by interviewing now. But I think it's, it's a good, since we've already started the process, let's go through each one of them and go through that process and, and, and uh, see what each one of them have to offer which will, and in the meantime, start preparing to send out our RFP and uh, try to choose a date and maybe send it out in a week or so once we conclude going through these. And then we um, send out the RFP, give them 45 days. That puts us into late September, October. And um, then we invite them to come in after we've gone through and 
narrowed it down because Becky said the other night that there were several who have are interested in presenting an RFP and bypassed. They didn't even make a submission on RFI. Okay, thank you, Mayor. I'll open it up to the commissioners for any comments, thoughts, or whatever you have. Seeing Mr. Harris? Has there been a motion on the floor? Not yet. I'd like to make a motion that we move these 12 to, uh, to RFP and suspense with the uh, going over each one of them and then go ahead and invite them to do an RFP and then set up that we had to have a meeting. We had to interview. And I'm okay with that. So I, I agree with, with Commissioner Blair and um, so I make that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. We need to open that for discussion. I do think we kind of stepped a step further than Mr. Blair had intended because I believe you did want to go ahead and continue to look at what the information we had been sent. It, I thought uh, Chairman Harris's uh, motion is to include to continue to review these but dispense with the interview and go straight to the RFP okay. after we've gotten through these. That okay. was my understanding. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Call roll. Commissioner P. Yes. Mr. Dodd. Yes. Mr. Harris. Yes. Commissioner Serino. Yes. Mr. Blair. Yes. Vice Chair Piercy. Yes. From that point on, we will move on to our first company, uh, Mir Oaks. They sent a very in-depth, detailed RFI. And I'll open the floor up for comments about what you've read in your homework. Mayor Kitch. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, um, it was pointed out to me earlier today that, um, and I checked with Mac, if you look at their presentation at the, on the bottom of each page it says commercial dash in dash confidence um, sometimes companies in other parts of the world don't quite understand our RFI or RFP situation even though the people are out of North Dakota but they're actually out of Belgium um, this appears to be because they have cost and pricing it appears to be their RFP and ask this to be in confidence. So it, whatever questions you may have on this this presentation, uh, don't mention any any names and this will be held over for their RFP because we don't want to publicly announce that. And, and uh, Nick said that we're okay with that. Thank you. Mr. Nolan, you have a comment? Uh, I spoke with a representative of the company today uh, one of the things I had several questions and one of them is on uh, the page on the abstract it's a proof of concept plant so I wanted to find out what that meant if it's something a little toaster sized thing that actually does what they want to do if it's actually a plant uh, it's the 120,000 metric ton plant is what they have up and running and that's what they propose in their facility and that's per year tons now I had to clarify and make sure on that uh, ask about the wood waste, furniture, mattresses, and tires. They said they'd wait for the actual RFP to, to respond to that part. And then uh, ask about public-private partnerships or land, and they would like to try to partner, and they would like to have some land. Anybody else? My only question is, is this commission going to allow this committee to go to Belgium and look at it in person? I would say if everybody wanted to pay their own way, yeah, we'd probably go. Well, <laughs> I guess we won't go. Okay. <laughs> they, they, they do make good waffles and chocolate and <laughs> beer. I 
had one question that Mr. Nolan might could answer for since since he's a little more educated on a lot of this than, than I am. The bio coal pellets, would that not be similar to what we looked at up in Marson, a burnable pellet? Or is yes. that different? Yes, it would. That be. would be basically the, the same end product. Mm -hmm. That is correct. I had one other question. What would classify as a non-recyclable organic waste? Probably something contaminated with some type of chemical that you wouldn't want to be in the process. You wouldn't want to be part of your fuel source or, you know, it may have some lead contaminant in it or something like that that you wouldn't want to be in the, the particulates after the, you burn it. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Mr. Blair. Could we ask Ms. Caldwell if she has any thoughts or is there a summary in her, her mind with in regard to this prospect? Yes, sir. The other night we we really didn't call on Ms. Caldwell for anything and I, myself I made it that she kind of wasted her time coming and we didn't call on her. But I would like to have a comment from you today on each one of these three on really what they do and uh, if you think they can help us or not. Thank you. Go ahead. So on this one, I think what we have to note is that there's a lot of bioengineering here. So there are a lot of trademark processes here. Um, I think there would be some questions about that. So there is good information here, but I think there are some questions as to what exactly it is they want as well as what the output is. Um, if you look on page 17, you'll see how it compares to, well, at the top, you've got your bullet points where they actually mention um, the treatment options there at the top are the functions that we've identified. And then they actually talk about other processes at the bottom, and that's just general information. Um, the parameters that they mention on the top of 18 are things that we've all talked about. So that part does match what we've asked for, what we've had in mind in our conversations over the past several months. Um, I will point out also in the back, starting on page 29, they mention um, risk mitigation. And so one of the things that we've continually mentioned is that as you look at any of the processes in the solid waste industry, we have to make sure that we have an efficient amount of material or, you know, we don't have enough material to do this or we do have enough material to do that. You've heard us say that. So the one thing that this company did that I was impressed with is they actually say things like we need enough material to do this or we have this risk mitigation if we don't have enough material. So those are just things I would, I would point out. As far as the specific technology itself, um, there would be questions on it only because I'm not familiar with the bioengineering of it. Um, and there are, you know, some of the trademark processes here that I think we would have questions about. Okay, thank you. Mr. Blair, you have a question? Yes, sir. Uh, we ran into a, with the, uh, with the jail, a copyright or a trademark issue with, with what was going on with, and I forget the, uh, was it the communication or uh, email, uh, internet? It, was that the was that the issue that um, gotcha. when since we're moving into such a complicated range of, of methods to deal with solid waste, uh, is there would would it be the contract that would protect us from any kind of trademark or copyright infringement by? but say somebody that we hired to uh, for our solution. That's a good Nick Christensen <clears throat> question. And of course he's off today. I did talk with him earlier today, but I think we, as we navigate our way through this process, I think it's going to be incumbent to, to have representation from our legal counsel just to make sure that we don't step off, you know, a cliff somewhere. Uh, w w without some type of being tethered, you know, we need to be cautious. As we see, there there are uh, things that are proprietary, and you know, when they printed on here, commercial in confidence. I don't didn't know the true meaning of that, but 
I got a pretty good gist of what it meant. When you say confidence. Mr. T. Yeah, just having looked look at these and I haven't got into them to the depth that I need to yet, but had a, a question for Rebecca there. This group, of course, is got quite a few different options of course the biofuels things like that but they're not they're just talking about the waste that we're generating as we go along if we wanted to incorporate mining our old landfill have they these guys got the capacity or i assume they would to if we work to deal out with someone to mine out the old landfill to cycle that through this system can we integrate that basically what i'm getting at you think that there's a possibility of integrating some of these together i think um i think as you look at the processes we've talked about separating materials we've talked about how you know how certain materials in our part of the country are are more recyclable or worth more value than others um, so yes, I think that's a possibility and I think you can mix and match technologies as far as if we start with this material, um, we want to process it this way and get to either a recycling market or do we get to a gasification system or do we get to a system similar to this. Um, I think that's, it's, a, it's puzzle pieces, if you will. Um, I will say on this one, um, they do mention they can manage the minimum capacity is 50,000 tons and the maximum is 300,000 tons. So I think anything in between that is what they say they can manage. So I would say the answer to your question on the surface is yes. And, and to follow up on that, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I think it's good that we go through this and those are questions that we put into the RFI that, that say uh, what we see from composting down in Ashland City, we can come back and say, are you interested in doing composting and, and working in a conjunction with at the same location or uh, out of North Carolina, are you interested or do you have the capability of coming in and mining out our current landfill and getting rid of those recyclables? Those are the type of questions that we need to be asking them in our RFP process. Well, I like what I'm hearing there and, and that's that's my thoughts. You know, we should be able to mold this into what we want and right. what's, what work best for us. We, we put our puzzle together. I, we, I don't know if we got a consensus, but I think a lot of us would like to see that old landfill emptied and cleaned up and not have that liability hanging over our necks or yes, our grandchildren's necks from now on and to be able to put that in the rfp i think to mix and match as we see fit would be a good thing for all of us one of <clears throat> excuse me one of the three that we'll go through in our next meeting addresses what commissioner p was just asking about okay anyone else before we leave this one, Mr. Harris. You know, I, there, I have a lot of questions for this company, but this is one of the reasons I made the motion. Uh, as far as uh, I'd like to, if I, there's any input from this committee, I'm trying. I'm seeing two different numbers. I'm seeing 77 million, and I'm seeing 60 million total financing need. Right. No dollars. <laughs> Uh, what I'm seeing is that I would like some questions that could be asked also is uh, how the, how do they what do they want for us as far as uh, can I say that land and financing and down payments and, and, and information like that I think most of those questions would be answered in the RFP I believe I'm yeah. just saying those questions are the ones that I would, would hope that we this committee would ask yeah. and, and invest before we do meet with them. Right. Anyone else? Mr. Chairman, I, I really liked uh, pages 19, 20, and 21 where a company comes in and talks about other companies that are in the same relationship as um, they are and the ins and outs on this table, description, proven technologies, integrated solutions, materials recovery, energy recovery, and then profit uh, potential. So, I mean, that right there just gives us a good overall with other procedures and other companies and what what is actually going on around us in other countries. 
and also in the United States as well. But uh, and it kind of pulls these out, and and this is some of the stuff we're looking at in this RFI. This is information. This is good, solid information we can use. And I don't even know if some of these we've contacted. I know we did Fulcrum, but these others, I'm we're gonna send them some and say, hey, y'all interested? Aren't we, Becky? We are. And something that I noticed there, this may be a good template to use as we start to look at different technologies, because there will be questions down this left side of, you know, what's the description of it? What materials are they going to manage? Um, what's the volume and that type of thing um, that we'll want to consider as we look at all of them, whether it's the RFI or RFP process. More thoughts, questions, or on this subject? If not, we will leave uh, Muir Oaks and move on to our next one. Motion we made that was to send every, put everyone on the RFP list. Yeah, so we won't have to do that. The next one we have in line is the New Planet Energy Corporation. I'll open the floor up. Well, let's hear from Ms. Caldwell and just give us a brief description, if you know, what they are, what they do. So based on what I read here from their response, um, just a summary from, from my own notes, um, it does seem like they want to partner with the county. Um, the residents would not necessarily need to change their current behavior, so there's nothing different on the residential side. Uh, local collection companies would maintain their status quo. In other words, what's going on at the local level here in your community would maintain and stay the same. There is a mixed waste processing component. Um, they speak of an enclosed facility, one container system, potentially hiring 50 to 70 full-time employees. Um, the goal would be to extend the life of existing landfills with up to 90% diversion rate. That would be their goal at the end game. Um, there would be very little direct involvement from the county in what I can read here. There are references in different states throughout you know, Minnesota, Maine, California, Nevada. So they have, they have a presence elsewhere. Um, the partners that are available to build the integrated system have been around for a while. I think the, the, uh, the company that's the oldest of the three would be the one that was started in 1960. So they've got some experience and they've been around for a while again. Um, they would basically create a solid recovered fuel from the non-recyclable portion of the waste stream. So ultimately they're also dealing with that non-recyclable piece. Um, they would look to work with the county on the best site, but they did not mention that they had any expectation of the county other than just support and finding the best location. Um, the one thing that I would ask them uh, would be who are the buyers of their final output? Um, it says large industrial user. I'm not sure who those folks are. So that would be a question I would ask them. Um, and then I'm not sure what permits they would need to actually do this process here or to actually submit and, and build a facility like this here. So those would be the questions I would have. Okay, thank you. Mr. Nolan, you have anything on this? They would require 1,200 tons a day. If you're looking at a uh, 261 to 300 day year is what they're looking at. Uh, 313 million or 313, 200,000 tons or more. Uh, that can be acquired if we wind up with all the res residential waste in the county. Uh, they mentioned on page four generation of electricity steam or heat the facility they're looking at here would produce the fuel source for that but not actually do the generation here the that fuel source would be shipped to the plants that are using this the stuff it's a hundred thousand or uh, hundred million dollar investment in the facility and they have all the money they need they don't want any of ours uh, the collection point would be one can could be 
one container. You put all your trash, recycles, everything else in one container. When it gets there, they take care of separating it all out. So you don't have to start any new recycling programs. Any existing programs, you're welcome to continue. Uh, there will be some stuff that comes out of the the backside of it that will need to go to the landfill. So they're still going to need a landfill component uh, to make the residential stuff work. You're probably going to have to. <coughs> That way you can guarantee the, the amount of trash, that the amount of stuff that they're going to need. Uh, the way the plant is set up, it would be uh, two separate fully functioning lines, identical lines for redundancy. And if they need to run at full capacity, both lines will be running at full capacity. Any other questions? Mike, I noticed one of their energy partners, our project team members, is uh, GBB, is that the company that we had contracted with previously? That is correct. Okay. Get a discount on that? Yeah. Can we get a discount on that? <laughs> <laughs> We're already heavily invested. That, that's there. probably the reason that they had so much information on us. <laughs> is because GBB had that information. Gotcha. And if, if you look at a lot of these large projects around the world, GBB is part of those. Gotcha. Let's hear some comments and questions on your homework. Mr. Harris. One of the things that I've seen in this is page uh, 18 is where they are saying that they retrofitted a Republic facility in Las Vegas, Nevada, and this facility is the same one that Republic has said that this, you know, they want to do this approach with us so i guess my question is is this are they wanting us to start their own company or are they just i'm really confused anybody have an answer for mr harris the company that, that uh mayor ketcher was speaking of gbb is the one that worked on all of these different plants in there So their technology, the, like a company like Republic, just you, subcontracts. They're the <clears throat> they subcontract, I guess. So Republic could subcontract to New Planet Energy, and they would put in the machinery for the for the MRF. Republic could do it either way. I mean, they can run it themselves, or they can do their. They can have a contractor run it for them. Gotcha. When we were at uh, Newby Island. It was a Republic facility, but you had a lot of different contractors doing the different parts of what went on at that facility. Okay. Makes sense. Mr. Blair. Mac, remind me in the <coughs> RFI, um, how many did we share with, in the RFI, how many tons would be processed a day, uh, a day in, in our total annual tonnage? Cause I remember the state says that every every citizen produces about one ton, and I think mayor our population is about 330,000, so that would be approximately 330,000 tons of solid waste, residential solid waste each year. Is that correct? That's correct. Our RFI mentioned that we control, we manage 86,000 tons between the city and the county. And if we went countywide, it would be up to that 300,000. So there's a wide range for them to look at in there. It, about, uh, it's over, it's over 313,000. Their, their, their actual number is going to be a six day work week. They, they were planning on working on Sundays. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Serino. Yeah. I have one question might be referred to Mr. Nolan on page 35, six, number 6.5. Page 35. Yes, sir. We, we can't quote numbers, remember that? Yes, sir. Dollar numbers. 
prepared the question is, you know, they said talking about one hundred million dollars <laughs> <laughs> for construction. <laughs> Oh, me. <laughs> yes, Mr. Dunn. I just did want to comment. We, we can't talk numbers that these folks have printed on their page, but these numbers are confirming numbers we've discussed the last two years. So I just yep. want to say, Shanto, it. these projects we speculated are going to be 50 million to 100 million and and then we could we could conceive of a billion dollar project if we did if we took all the saw the 17 county solid waste we're currently taking and built a facility it could be that big so I think we are gonna ultimately somebody's gonna invest a hundred million dollars or we're gonna partner on a hundred million dollars to build a facility that's just something I'm keeping in mind Commissioner K <coughs> Not here, uh, Mac. Say earlier that this company in particular had plenty of money and didn't need our investments. It's correct. They're 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 wanting to come and take care of our trash. They're not wanting any money from us. Their profits would be from whatever they generated from the trash. Correct. And Commissioner P has mentioned a time or two before, if we're going to take somebody else's trash, then it wouldn't maybe we would want to look at Laverne area so they're not really deep into the county. This company is looking, if they're set up shop it here locally, they want to be in an industrial area. That's where they want to be. Any more comments on this company? So we will close their book. I, I do oh, have Mr. a question, Pete? and maybe it's way premature there. Is your mic on, Mr. P? It is. <laughs> I can't hear you. Not hooked up at home. That's why you're not here. But, Mac, with the figures you've seen out of here, you got any idea of what cost per ton would be for the county? Not necessarily just this one, but, you know, several of these we've looked at as far as what's it going to cost us? or our citizens, you know, on a, uh, if we had to implement a monthly fee or whatever. Have you got any feeling from any of these along that line? You know, we, look, we looked at Sevierville, and what they say, 45 a ton is what they were basically operating off, and that was at a no cost. I'm just kind of trying to see if we've got any kind of feeling yet from any of these we've seen. I don't think any of them's given us a ter per ton price. We could guess at it, but I'd hate to throw that number out today. Uh, like Sevier County, those partner ag agencies get that cheaper price. Anybody that's not part of that pays a higher price for disposal. That's where they get a little profit. Uh, it's mentioned in here that if we were the host county, we could probably get a cheaper disposal rate than anybody else would. But that doesn't answer your question, I know. <laughs> Well, it, it kind of does because then, you know, that lets us know, do we want them to handle this completely on their own? Are we basically going to work out a subcontract system where, you know, the fees would be coming to us and we pay them out of our fees? I mean, there's, there's all kinds of different things we can do. I'm just trying to get a good feel of it. Our, our current market in Middle Tennessee is around 40 to $50 a ton. Um, over the past three years, we've seen that rise from about $32 a ton. So it's on the rise because we are looking at landfill space that is diminishing in capacity. There are some cities and counties out there that do still have a lower rate than that, um, simply because they've had a contract for a while or it's been in place for several years um, before we've arrived at where we are now. So that's, that's the latest numbers on average. Thank you. Thank you. And, it, and if we started today, we broke ground today on any facility, it'd take two years to build it. So that space continues to erode mm -hmm. and prices continue to rise. I would say it's going to be higher in two years from now if we started today. But I don't see us getting through this process until, you know, hopefully by the end of the year or March or something first part first quarter next year anyway 
but that's when we sit down to the negotiating table and say, okay, we need something on our behalf as the host county if that's going to happen here. We need we need to be cheaper than anybody else coming in, coming in here. We need to look at rail access for some of these things too. Uh, and Becky and I were doing that last night. The, the rail comes all the way through Rutherford County, but if you start looking for places, industrial type areas to tie up to the rail, most of them are already taken. Got Entertain 20 City acres. In, got 20 acres in Florence. But yes, yes, we do have that. Right on the rail, Singer Road. Rest of what we was looking at would probably be on the south side of town after you get past. Yeah, it'll be Jackson. Okay, thank you. Anything else on the new Planet Energy? Are you ready to move on to the last one? That brings us to Pratt's Recycling. Mr. Caldwell, can you give us a briefing on Pratt's company? Sure. Um, this is an example of a company that manages a specific waste stream or a specific type of waste. Their focus is primarily on fiber recycling. The interesting part about Pratt is that they truly do feed themselves. So when they collect or when they accept cardboard or mixed paper, they actually use it in their processing to make cardboard on the back side of cardboard boxes. So in a, in a sense, it's a closed system, if you will. Um, they do have mills throughout the, um, throughout the southeast. They also have Ohio and New York. Um, they accept mixed paper, magazines, box board, and corrugated fiber. Um, so basically that's your mixed papers and your, your cardboard primarily, and that's really all, that, that's really their focus. And Matt, correct me if I'm wrong, do they take anything else than that? Single stream, so they do take some single stream. Um, and here they've mentioned those materials. Um, they've mentioned actually building a MRF, that they have built several material recovery facilities, operate them and market the materials at the backside. Um, they have mentioned two options, either a transfer station for off-site recyclables processing or to actually design and operate a full-scale MRF for um, not only for this community but for the region could be located here in Rutherford County. Um, the MRF would potentially process 300 to 500 tons a day with a capacity for 600 to 700 tons a day. Now remember that's not, not garbage, that's just your mixed paper, your cardboard. Um, storage capacity for 300 plus baled processed tons, uh, again would be a regional facility. We mentioned timing a couple of minutes ago. Um, what they've said is the transfer station would potentially take 18 months once it's sited and permitted, and a MRF would take possibly 24 months once it's sited and permitted. So I think anything we look at, we do have to think about where is it going to be, what permits, whether it's the county or a private company, what permits do they need, how long does that take, and then you take that beyond that is construction and or um, if you're going to you know, actually retrofit a, an existing facility or not. So I think your two years is, is conservative, maybe in some cases. Wait a minute. To obtain a permit, do you have to give precise location at the time you submit your request? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Mr. Nolan? We've actually toured this facility. Jeff Davison, Joey Smith, and Shannon Logan, when she was with the city, we took a trip down there to tour the facility. And if you look in there at the one at Conyers, Georgia, it says uh, 35 tons per hour. If you stand in there looking at these ladies picking off that line, I don't see how they can even see what's going by. 30, 35 tons per hour is seven miles an hour. And you don't think that's very fast until you're trying to reach out and grab it. <laughs> but it's a really, it's fairly new when we went. Uh, of course, everybody has looks at it differently. They didn't. Their dump floor wasn't large enough. So while we were there, they were already in the process of making that much larger. The other thing that this facility is in one corner is a transfer station. So any of the items that come in that are true trash, they wind up pushing them over to the transfer station. So they have a home for that. Uh, the other thing that they had is all the paper products were being uh, loaded into tractor trailer, open top tractor trailers, and they literally pulled those tractor trailers and dumped them like 300 yards away. That was the paper plant. So they were in the process of building a conveyor belt 
and doing away with those trailers. So, you know, everybody learns from what they did before, and they'll do stuff differently. Uh, when we were talking with them at that time, they were kind of leaning toward us having a piece of property and possibly building the building. They put all the equipment inside of it and run it. So, you know, there's there's a lot of different options on how you would want to do that. I like their idea of a transfer station, uh, and I think that's, for what we have, that's probably the best solution. The uh, process is large and as expensive as this, we don't have enough to run it. Thank you very much. I think this company could be a major player in our role if we take several companies and piece our own project together versus turning it over to one individual. I think they're well worth looking at, that's, that's sure. for sure. Mr. Blair. <clears throat> we know approximately how much solid waste we produce residentially each year. Do we know uh, how much of an impact that this process would have as far as uh, taking away from the waste stream? This process is similar to what we're doing today. You know, we collect paper and cardboard at our centers and we deliver it to, to Laverne. Uh, we could take it to uh, to this company, Pratt's in Nashville as well. It's just a further haul for us. Uh, they also do, they don't do any single stream recycling here, but they do it in Conyers because they have a contract in Atlanta, I think is where that's coming from. Uh, so the more recyclable that you pull out of it before you send it to a disposal type facility, of course, it's gonna be a little more helpful. Uh, one of the previous company we looked at, the recyclables are fine. They're going to separate it once it gets there anyway. Previous company said that they would take care of 90% of our solid waste. It, did I understand that correctly? Like 85. 80, 85. Okay. Um, so is there a percentage that this uh, technique would take care of? It could be. It could be. A lot of it is going to be, depend on what we decide and what our residents can afford and can withstand. Right now, the contamination is terrible in the recycle, and it's statewide. It's not just here. Uh, people have been at home, the COVID thing, they've got more stuff. They're, they want to kind of recycle, but they'll throw the trash in there with it, that type of things. So the education we've mentioned before, that's going to be a large, large component on trying to get us where we need to be. Uh, and of course, that's going to take quite some time to get that going. Uh, I do have some numbers here. If you look at a three, 300 day year, like they, you know, they're going to operate and they need so many tons a day. So if you figure those days in a year, it's 300 instead of 365. Um, Rutherford County solid waste average 152.10 tons per day. And, and that's trash. And we average 18.35 tons of recyclable per day for a total of 170.45 tons per day. That's what we average in calendar year 2019. Any more questions on this company? Comments? Suggestions? Mayor, you have anything else? Are we through? Mr. Nolan? I'd like to make a suggestion as if, if, if we could have a little bit of discussion on what we think we want. We've looked at half of the presentation so far. Is there anything in there that we've learned that we hadn't thought about? There is for me to see if any of, of you others have any thoughts of what direction we may be leaning toward? I'll start out and get the conversation going, Mr. Chairman. Go I, I think all of us would like to see uh, heavy uh, recycling, some type of state-of-the-art recycling. I'd like to see composting. I think that that's we all went to Sevierville and looked at that. We we've seen. I think composting should be in the mix. Um, that they'll come in and do it at their own expense and without us unless they, they make an offer to, to partner in some way and in that partnership then what does it actually going to cost our citizens I think all of us want the least amount of cost to our citizens that we can possibly get um, 
you know, if we're going to be the host community, then we need it as cheap as possible for our citizens and let the other people pay for it. Um, I think limiting the amount that we have to go on the hook as far as cost, that's where it comes back to them uh, footing the bill as far as whatever the cost is. I think another area that we've talked about over the last year is relieving us of, of that liability in our current landfill that was discussed just a minute ago with Chairman P. Uh, somebody willing to come in and do that and, and dig out that old landfill. Those are those are things that that we need to definitely focus on. Um, I'll throw it out there and let other people make comments. Curbside, curbside recycling. I think I've heard from some of the companies that they're going to probably in order to make it work, yes. How can we engage through education? Can this company, any of the companies come in and help us in the educational process of planting the seed through our school systems and helping engage our next generation so we start training them at an early age? You know, come to us with that information as well. Commissioner Blair. I agree with the mayor that uh, reclaiming the uh, the old landfill is, uh, I think, on the same scale as us finding a solution to our present uh, solid waste uh, stream. Uh, I guess my question would be if if we don't find a one process that takes care of the entire uh, issue and we wound up selecting, let's say, two or three different entities, how would that be coordinated in, in making sure, a, say, a three-entity partnership? <laughs> how would that how would we control that partnership, I guess, is what I'm asking. Does that make sense? I, I think that's an important uh, comment because we definitely, if we're going to be the host, we definitely want to be in control. We want to be able to say that we're controlling this whole issue from the very beginning. Um, once we bring in the cities uh, and have their input as well, if they're going to participate, but we need to reach out and ask them if they're going to participate. But then we stay in control, and then once we decide, okay, there's not one company out there that's willing to do it all, so we start putting our pieces of that puzzle together. Uh, if you remember my presentation back in the fall of the different pieces that, that Ashley had put together in that map, it's take this piece, and we sit down at the negotiating table and say, okay, you want to do composting? Let's talk. Now, Company A, what can you do to help get that uh, uh, feedstock over to Company B? You know, it's, it's just going to be us sitting around trying to negotiate who can do what. I, I, I foresee it being boiled down by, by the end of this process in RFP, probably two or three companies uh, that, that we're negotiating hard with. Maybe three, four, five. Max has five. All right. Anybody got six? You want to auction this off? <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else want to comment on this, Mr. Peake? Well, I think the mayor started off good uh, in, in what he mentioned, the four things there. And, and of course, Commissioner Blair filled in also. And I think a lot of us are kind of falling in here and, and agreeing that getting the landfill the uh the, that liability is one of the big issues for most of us at least that's what i'm i'm getting long term but for sure one of the one of the things i want us to keep in mind i don't care which way we go on this and, and i think commissioner blair is right you know if we don't find one entity that can do everything we want the way we want it then you know we can look at maybe partnering with these guys but that's something that I think would be more difficult, but then again, it might be the best thing for us. But, you know, I keep saying too, the, uh, the least cost to our citizens, and I agree with that wholeheartedly. However, I want to put a caveat on there and say the least cost to our citizens that leaves us with a clean environment. And, you know, the impact's got to uh, not leave us with liability in the future. Who, and we see this at our 
convenience centers is where if we put a large facility in somewhere and that's kind of why i always suggested hey let's look at this industrial park where we've got a rail system to help us is i don't want traffic congestion and not only with the traffic congestion who's going to take care of those roads the cost of those roads you know if we sub this out or we let some other entity do everything there we've got cost to our county for these roads and all this work that we've got to maintain where these trucks are coming in and out of our county so you know that's something we've got to keep in mind when we look at these and these bids and i want these guys telling us how they're going to help mitigate that uh, and the lastly i want to say is whatever comes into this county if it's outside trash i want us to have complete control over that and a veto it says no you're not bringing that to rutherford county and as long as we can do that i've had people tell me that they didn't want to work with certain groups or industries out there and i disagree with that and what i've told them is i don't care who it is as long as we have control and we have veto power over what they're you know what's coming into that process that way we can keep it safe for our citizens Okay, thank you. Mr. Harris. Well, I agree with Commissioner P, but I, I, I want to caution this committee that when we start looking at two and three companies, there's just so much trash that goes around. And my point in this is each one of these facilities are asking for a certain amount of tonnage. And one of the things that, our, that my district and some people that I had talked to are concerned with is a lot of counties bringing their trash in. And I think that for us to go two and three different companies, we'll have to bring in a whole lot more trash to keep these facilities running. So I want to caution us on that because that's one of the current concerns that I have is I don't want 47, 57, 100 counties bringing trash in because we got to sustain these, these you know, businesses. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you or any young, I'll stand up for this, but my number one thing that I am really looking at is reclaiming this landfill, county landfill. And I think it's huge, uh, huge undertaking. I think it is something that has to be done. I think it's a time bomb. So those are the things that I'm looking at. But I'm also like, I, 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 you know, this is like a buffet. You know, all these, these things that I'm looking at, I like this, I like that, I like this. And it's kind of like going to a buffet, you know. Everything looks good, I grab it, and then all of a sudden at the end, I got to pay for it. You know, now I'm going, almost, you know, what have I done? And I think that's kind of like, and I, I don't want to get in that situation. So I just want to concern this committee on the fact that these companies got to have trash to run. And there's just so much trash around. So much we got, we know how much, and then we're going to have to bring more in. So I am concerned about that, and I kind of agree with, I, I don't kind of agree, I agree with Commissioner P a lot on that. And that's just my two cents. Thank you. Mayor? Uh, th thank you, Mr. Chairman. Also, let us keep in mind that we, we need a, a much greater vision of how long uh, we need to put some stipulations in that of what we envision uh, their commitment to us. We don't want it six years or nine years when the landfill fills up. We want we want that vision for handling our waste stream for the next 30, 40 years. Uh, long after all of us are gone, protecting the next generation. Uh, is, is So, because this is a big step. When we make this decision, we want to make sure that it's going to... And, and the things might come along 20 years from now that may just, like, Commissioner says you get squirrels and turn diamonds into what was it gas or something I don't remember what he said but you know things will change technology wise um, but let's keep that in mind as we move forward with these companies one of the readings that we had for today one of the companies mentioned for a 15 year period that, that just kind of drew me back because I feel like we're looking 50 years down the road. Have to. You know, at this kind of investment, That's this true. needs to be long, long, -term. long range. Long term. Long range. Totally agree. Anyone else? Mr. Dodd, do you have any comments for us? Only that the, everybody has, con I concur with what everybody said, it would be redundant to continue. <laughs> Let me add something. Mr. Nolan. 
cost avoidance. We need to look at cost avoidance. If we do not reclaim the landfill, we're going to be paying on that landfill for all of our kids and generations and generations to come. So what does it cost to dig it up? I can't tell you that answer now, but I can tell you what it's going to cost not to. When we did our study a few years ago, it was going to be $30 million every 11 years. Oh, well, have you ever been around or involved where they were reclaiming a landfill like that? I have not. Um, Williamson County has a similar project on a much smaller scale. They're actually um, reclaiming one cell, filling another cell, and then they're coming back to, to reline and, and refill the cell that they've reclaimed. So it's a much smaller scale. Um, I'm glad to reach out to those folks and get some details for us. Um, one of the things I would say is if it's, you know, if it's a landfill and you're, um, you're committed to reclaim it, then what would you want it to be at the end of the day? Would you want it to be a property that is actually permitted and left dormant so that that's your insurance policy? Or would you rather have it be a county landfill that's, whether it's operated by the county or not, but it's owned by the county and all of a sudden you have your own landfill there in that same location? Um, where you take and manage your county trash or your county garbage. Um, obviously, if you start to look at 300 plus thousand tons a year, um, you're looking at a lot more than you have now. But how long would that space hold you as far as just your county residential waste that you manage now? Okay, thank you. We, uh, we core drilled to bedrock on the county landfill, correct? Do you know if it would have to be mined out to bedrock or just down to clean dirt? I don't know. If you're going to re reuse it for landfill, then you'd want to go down as deep as you can to capture all the available space. But if you were just not going to use it, so that, in my opinion, that's what we're trying to get away from is to stop burying trash in Rutherford County. Okay. So if you were going to bring it back down to usable land for structures or some type of situation that we're discussing here, you know, part of it. Do you know if it would have to go to bedrock or just down to clean, clean dirt? Go down to clean dirt. Uh, the proposal that we looked at two days ago, I guess it was now, to, to reclaim the landfill, if you remember, part of their thing is they were digging it out, they were selling items, and they would sell some of the soils probably to the neighbor next door. And then at the end of it, if you paid attention, they was going to re, re permit and have another landfill. So if you're going to have another landfill, you don't want to sell your dirt because if you read it further down, it said you'd have to find soils. So it depends on what, if you don't want to put a landfill back, then you can sell your dirt. If you're going to put it back, then you cannot. I, I would agree with Mike. You, you want to go down to your dirt instead of bedrock because if you go to bedrock, then that's going to put us lower. The only thing that separates us and Republic is a fence. If we go lower than what their liner is, then we'd have all the leachate cascading down into our hole, right? Okay, shouldn't. Okay, I'll write that word shouldn't down. <laughs> So, you know, if, if we're looking, I, I'm glad y'all are speaking of digging up the landfill. That's been my whole project since I've been here. Uh, that that proposal for that company is, does have a landfill component going back into it. So that would be a, a point that you'd have to agree on that that's not what we're going to do. But it's another option, though, because if you're – if you're taking in or recouping that landfill, so to speak, and our dirt and putting it back over on a liner for what's coming through or just taking care of our trash, so to speak, you know, at that, it's not even 42,000 tons a year, right? No, that's city and county. So ours is 26, 28, 46, okay. So you're talking that 5% or 10 percent number if they're true numbers going back into the landfill then we could possibly take care of our own and still come out with that MRF on recycling composting 
Um, and then whatever that 10% is, I think in perfect world, they've been saying 5% is definitely going to have to be landfilled. We could landfill that our, ourself in our, in our, on our own spot with a liner. And you're talking, heck, at that rate, you're looking at, I don't know how many years. I think if you would go out and just see the investment Republic has in their landfill on how they try it, they're trying very hard to do it right, and far as I know they are, our investment into having our own county landfill would and do it up to specs, not like it is today, would way outweigh the cost of what it would save what little trash you'd put in it from recycling and composting whatever was left because it they've got millions and millions and millions of dollars invested just in trying to catch the gas the runoff fluids the capping device everything I feel like that's something the county does not want to be involved in that's just my opinion somewhat agree commissioner but I'm I'm saying we've got options and we've got opportunities on both sides. It whether is an we, option. Whether we want to take care of it ourselves, then there's a, a solution in taking care of it ourselves. And that landfill, the existing landfill, recouping it and utilizing it in a better way uh, with these two components or three in front or beside or behind, whatever you want to say, on our land now and doing it ourselves, that's an opportunity. Um, and you're not talking about regular trash and, and, and providing that leachate or gas and stuff like that because you're getting all that stuff out on the front end and reclaiming your old landfill. So it's putting it back in a better state as well as no smell and you're doing it in this composting type recycling event compared to anything that we've ever done on that location since we've started or our neighbors next door. Anytime when our neighbors are done next door, they're done. And they lock the gate like you said before. Anytime you have two people in a conversation, you always have two different opinions. Uh, I'm all about reclaiming the landfill. I'm totally against having more trash buried in Walter Hill, whether it's on the county landfill or the Republic landfill. I'm not against it in the very end if we're forced to use our county property for part of our mainstream problem. But as far as starting another landfill in Walter Hill, I'll never stand for it. Thank you. Mr. Nolan. Let me ask you the question then. I understand what you're saying. I just want to clarify what you're saying. <laughs> we're not bringing any more new trash in. I don't disagree with that, but to clean, reclaim the landfill, you're going to have to create a space to bury what you can't get rid of. So would you be willing to rebury on a liner what's already there? Yes, I would. Okay, that's, then that's the landfill reclamation process. That would need to be the discussion we have with that company if that's where we want to go. Anybody else got anything? Mr. Harris. Mr. I, never got I'd say, I never thought I'd say when it comes to this committee, I agree with Commissioner Piercy, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to I want to I want to say I agree. I don't take this. Uh, and I'm speaking only for myself, <laughs> only for myself. I'm not taking that proposal as as uh, as with much grain of salt. And I'm going to tell you why, because based on uh, people that met with us, for instance, Republic, they have offered to reclaim the landfill. They have offered recycling facility. They have offered compost. So I'm like you, I don't want another landfill. I mean, we don't need another landfill. I mean, we got one now. So I'm not really, you know, that's kind of not where I want to go in that direction. And plus, if I had to go in that direction, I want to get something. And they're not offering anything like recycling or composting or any of those facilities. So um, I'm, I agree with, <laughs> Commissioner Piercy, and uh, I don't want to see a, a landfill or us grow our government any more than it is. Mr. Blair? So, hypothetically, we have an entity that 
able to take care of 90% of our solid waste stream. Uh, and 10% has to go into our landfill. Uh, where is that 10% going to go? I would, I would say that, I, I don't know, this is just a wild guess, but I would say that 10% would have to go to a transfer station and leave this county once Republic is full. Mr. P. You know, we're, we're talking about whether we'll bring in outside waste outside of our county. And I think one of the criteria of allowing an outside agency to bring trash into our county is they're going to have to be open to share some of this burden. And to me, you know, I'm, I'm tired of the landfill being in Rutherford County. Uh, one of these entities wants to bring in trash. I think they need to be open to having a landfill that we can utilize kind of a tit for tat. Uh, you know, we all are going to have a little blood in this if we're going to work together. So right. Bringing trash in from an outside agency or outside county, they want to do that fine, but they're going to have to be able to reciprocate somehow. Mr. Nolan. That brings us back to the greater Nashville region. What part of that region do we want to partner with? Everybody in that region is looking similar. They're not looking yet, but they should be doing the process that we're doing today. So we're going to be ahead of that curve. So it gives us the opportunity to help somebody else with solutions, but they'll have to do what Mr. P said. They'll have to find a, a home for some of that commodity. You know, that was going to, that has been a question in my mind for quite some time. Last number I heard going into Republic was in the 30s on counties bringing trash in. Are we the only one that's worried about it? You know, you don't hear of any other county or any other government chasing the garbage issue. Well, they all are, uh, Commissioner, aren't they? They all are, but, but one of the issues is you have one of the larger communities, so you're going to have a larger volume to, to manage and consider. Um, as you look at the other counties or other cities in the area, they're going to look to you all and say that was the solution, that was the best for them, and they're going to it, more or less jump on the coattails, if you will, it, um, simply because they don't have... It's safe to say that they're all watching us to oh, see what we're sure. going to do. Even Metro, uh, Metro, uh, the previous mayor had a solid waste plan, and then he lost the election, or, and then it goes back three mayors, I guess, and every time they come out with a new plan, they, they shelve it or don't take any action on it, but they're all trying to struggle. All, how many counties in the mid-state, 20? We've got 13 counties in the GNRC region, and we looked at 20, 22 Four. Yeah. for the master plan. So the whole mid-state's looking in this realm, but they're all watching us right now because we're, like Max said, we're a step ahead of everyone. And it's a tough topic. It's a tough topic for anyone. Mr. P. Kind of answer that question that was thrown out a minute ago. I brought this up at the last regional county commissioners association meeting. And it was kind of a deer in the headlight looks around. And yeah, there's some people are aware, but a lot of these counties that are sending waste to us are not aware that they're sending waste to us because it's being shipped through independent uh, businesses. So they don't know, you know, what those businesses are doing. They're looking for the lowest cost where they can dump it. And, you know, if that happens to be our landfill over here in Rutherford County, that's where it's coming from. That's where all those high number of counties is coming from. It's not necessarily a county agreement with Republic or one of these. It's, it's a private contractor the way I see it you know, uh, utilizing the lowest cost and what's closest to them. So that's part of the reason you're not seeing county commissioners in these other counties aware what would happen to them if we shut the door. Yeah. Their cost is going to go up because these independent contractors can no longer get, say, the cheaper cost, which would be here. You know, once this one we've got at Republic's landfill is full and we shut the door, you know, I don't think that's sunk in to a lot of them yet, at least on the lower commission, uh, the way they are looking at it. Because like I said, they don't realize that they're shipping to us. Right. And, and I'll say this on behalf of solid waste directors around Middle Tennessee, 
they keep the garbage moving, doesn't pile up, disappears at the curb. So it's really of no, no count to folks that don't see it behind the scene or don't have this upfront and personal relationship with the landfill. Um, it disappears, it's the magic that happens until the can doesn't, it doesn't get emptied or until it starts to pile up and that's when it, it becomes an issue. But at that point, um, there's no time to plan. At that point, you just react. I'm, I'm gonna make one last Go ahead. comment. Go Becky, because I think you got a better finger on the pulse there. I know I've mentioned this before that there wasn't any grant money available from the state of Tennessee for a larger county like us. Do you think that's gonna change? As of July 6th of this year, TDEC is not supporting any solid waste efforts at this moment. All money's coming out of the state. Um, is directed towards COVID right now. Um, that's why we've got a meeting next week trying to figure out the grant, the COVID restrictive grant. It's four and a half, it's 4.7 million. We got to try to figure out. It, money just seems to be falling out of the, out of the sky for other things other than solid waste. They got to put those masks somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. And, and just like the hospital, they're going through they're going through eight or nine hundred gallons a week, a week. Because once they they come in contact, they take one off and put another one on. So that's that's a lot of gallons. That even though they're see through, sometimes that's still a lot of space. No, get something else. One thing that I would like to ask y'all to consider as we're going through this process. One county in particular that's going to need our help is Cannon County. Who? Cannon County. When we will look at a solution for trash, we need to kind of keep them in mind and have space for their trash. The last numbers we looked at, they had 8,000 tons of trash a year for the last eight or nine years. That means every time a baby's born, a man leaves town. There's no growth whatsoever. You know, so they don't have any more revenue coming in. So, you know, so we need to look yeah. in that direction just a little bit. They're hurting. So are it Mr. Nolan, are you saying that Cannon County wants to work with us on this? They would be glad to work with us. They just don't have any money. Mayor Bush and I have talked multiple times. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Working and paying is two different things. Huh? <laughs> well, I'll mention we want somebody that can put a landfill in, so there you go. <laughs> hey, now you're talking. It's a form of economic development. <laughs> Work a deal. Yeah, work a deal. That county's been looked at pretty hard for landfill space, and they can't find any suitable soils. They did. I think they there's found one, one location. Place. Did they? They found one place, but they won't hear to it. They did find a. They did find some soil that was suitable, but they don't want it. They don't want the landfill. That short mountain. No, it's out toward. Uh, Marshall out, out in that area, out in that flat land. Do we have any more comments on Pratt's recycling company? If not, we will close this one over and pass them on to the RFP unless anybody has a objection. Mr. Sandlin, you have a comment? No, sir, Mr. Chairman, I was just going to mention our next meeting is August 11th, which would be next Tuesday. We'll, I assume, take the next three, and then the last three will be that August the 19th meeting at 6 o'clock. Therefore, the August 20th and August 26th, we may not need for, unless you want to talk about the RFP and trying to put it together and consuming all the information that we've gotten off of these next two meetings, but just kind of throw that out there for discussion before you shut down this meeting. Well, I wasn't ready to shut down, but I'm, I appreciate your comments. We will take, if no objection, we will take the next three in the in the row for the 11th. And then hopefully we can do the next three on our next meeting. Yes, it's the 19th. On the 19th. And it's at 6 o'clock. The 19th meeting is at 6 o'clock. The 11th is at 5.30. How long do you estimate... Miss Caldwell, it will take to draw up an RFP. 
think we have a lot of the work already done with the RFI. I think we need to look closely at some of the specifics of it, but it depends on um, maybe at the most six weeks at the most. As far as we, you know, as far as we keep it moving forward and answering questions and, and similar to how we've done the RFI. I think we would be ready for our third reserve date on our calendar to start that process after looking at the, the next six and then the next meeting. Look at that. Uh, 20th. 20th. The 20th. 20th of August. I can bring a draft to you or at least a list of, you know, of different points so that we can take a peek at it that night. I'm glad that would to. be my suggestion unless y'all object. Keep it rolling. I agree. Thank you. Mayor, do you need our whatever to contact the other cities of the county to see? You know, you told the other night that yes, you sir. needed that. Do you need that now? Uh, no, sir. Not right now. I, I think once we go through this, um, my, my fear was starting to interview, and I think we've taken care of that. Uh, I, I want to be so cautious of not to start interviewing without them having an opportunity to say we want to see at the table or not. So we've bypassed that. So we we roll on, and then once we get to the RFP, that will give me time, whether it's end of September or first of November, whenever that time period may be. Then we extend that invitation for them to join in with us uh, to have input. Uh, if we're going to do a draft RFP, we're going to glance at one on the 20th. Glance at the list. And if, don't we need the other municipalities buy-in yes. to have our quantities squared away? We're, we can stay at 84,000 plus 3% per year growth, or we take on more. So. You may just have to repeat what you just said. After the 20th, you'll be conversing with the other? Yes, sir. Okay. So the RFP will be delayed until we understand their buy-in? Yes, sir. Yeah, what I've shared with each one of the mayors up to this point is we're just taking care of a lot of, the, during this RFI, we're just identifying who the players who have expressed an interest, and I'm quite happy that we've got 12, maybe 14, 15, you know, that have bypassed in the RFI, and we're just doing all this so we can get more focused, and then we'll, when we start moving towards that RFP process, then, then definitely be offered a seat at the table. Mr. P. One last question, and this happened to come to mind because of that last comment I made about Cannon County, and your comment that they don't want a landfill and i understand that completely because you know we've been there done that left a bad taste in our mouth and in our drinking water and everything else but the thing that i think would be different on a landfill like that is if we are going through a process where we're using a MRF or compost biofuels or whatever and we're probably looking at 10 percent landfilling of everything that's left is that material not going to be more inert you know like a brick or something like that that's going to be composted i'm i, I know brick probably is not going to be it but i'm i'm trying to think what is going to be landfilled once we go to this process because we're going to try to get everything we can out of that waste system you know the plastics can be used as biofuels you know, the inorganic material or organic material can be composted. You know, the paper can be recycled. The metals can be recycled. So what is going to be left to go into a landfill? Because that might be make it more palatable for someone to have a landfill if it's not something that's going to create a lot of leachate, that kind of thing. So that's my question. Come back. Both, I want to hear from both of you on that. <laughs> In our next meeting, we'll have a company coming up that talks about a lot of that right there. Uh, I've been reading ahead. Uh, but you're right, we're going to need a landfill space. Transfer station will provide that, you know, if that's the direction we want to go. But if, if we do this well and we pick the right partners to get us through this solution, we I don't think there's any such thing as zero waste, but we can be awfully close. Mm -hmm. 
and to your point about what materials would be left over, a lot of that depends on um, what pieces of your puzzle you put together and what the market is in our area. Um, a lot of places aren't aren't using the heavier plastics, but obviously if you do biofuel or some type of system that could use that as as you know as a as a tool or as a uh, commodity on the front end or a feedstock. Um, all of a sudden you're using that and taking that out of the waste stream. So it'll depend on what those pieces are and what, what, um, what materials each piece can use or, or will plan to use. The biggest commodity we have today that does not have a home other than landfill is furniture. Sofas and mattresses oh, yeah. and things like that. I got two toilets today. You want them? <laughs> They make, really, they make really good black backyard planters. Well, she wants me to call her back because she wants to know what to do with those two toilets. <laughs> I don't put them on Pinterest. <laughs> <It's like> <laughs> <laughs> uh, do we have anything, Mr. Sandler? Well, Mr. Chairman, you had asked in the last meeting two things. And I've gotten that research back. Uh, one was about our contract and our electronics. The, in, the, in the RFP, there was language in there about uh, opting out and giving us notice and renewals, but their actual contract does not show that. I'll go ahead and throw out there, I'm not an attorney. So we checked with the attorney. They would have to review that and take a look at that. So if you want that back at your next meeting, we can do that. But from what I see here, there's no contract as of right now. So we're just operating under something that was done back in 14 and just kept going with it. I think through uh, this August uh, 2014 contract of when we put the proposal out. Okay, go ahead and go ahead and check on it. Okay, bring it the back to us. The next thing, and I think uh, the mayor alluded to it earlier, was the uh, open records part, and then through this open records in the RFI, that that would not be available through the open records request in the RFI that we don't have to give that information out, especially when a lot of these have put that terminology in there that it's confidential. So um, in the RFPs now, once we open those RFPs and go through those, then those would be um, allowed to be requested and viewed and everybody get a copy and all that sort of stuff. Okay, thank you. And we can get the, for sure, uh, county attorneys, whereas is on that to make sure we're all clear okay. and safe. Yeah, yeah, we, we really need his input. Anything else? Then we will adjourn this meeting. I hope you enjoy your afternoon.